Hey there, welcome back to another fireside chat here at the Freight Waves Drone Waves Virtual Summit. I'm your host of the conversation, Andrew Cox, a senior retail analyst here at Freight Waves. And today I have the distinct pleasure of speaking with Kevin Wasik. He's the head of business development at UPS Flight Forward, which is the UPS autonomous delivery vehicle uh, engine and division. And it's a very aggressive one and one of the, the better ones that we have in our industry. So I'm very excited to have Kevin come and join us, talk about the approach that UPS is taking to drones and talk about some of the use cases that are happening right now. Kevin, thanks for joining me. Absolutely, Andrew. Thanks for having me. So Kevin, for the uninitiated who have not been keeping up with UPS uh, drones and UPS, the, the approach that UPS has taken to drones as I have, tell us what is UPS Flight Forward and what's your role there? Great, thank you, Andrew. So UPS Flight Forward is a wholly owned subsidiary of UPS. And we are a drone airline certified by the FAA with a part 135 standard UAS uh, certificate. And what that means in layman's terms is that we're a drone airline. So we can operate a fleet of autonomous aircraft uh, and we can carry up to 7,500 pounds. Uh, and we are excited to, uh, to get this business up and running. So Kevin, as I said, you've taken, UPS has taken quite an aggressive approach to drones. Talk about us about the approach and the strategy that UPS is deploying and how it differs from some of the other big carriers. Sure. Um, so since 2016, UPS has been investing in research in, in drone operations. Um, but in 2019, we created Flight Forward. Um, and we partnered with a drone manufacturer called Matternet, and we began the nation's first revenue generating drone operation. That operation continues today at Wake Med Hospital in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, and we are transporting blood specimens from an outpatient clinic to the hospital's central lab. Uh, that operation is very uh, representative of, of our aggressive nature. We're looking to service the community, service the healthcare industry with drone operations today. Uh, competitors, other competitors in our industry like, like FedEx, like DHL, like the USPS um, are, are kind of either reaching out to service providers for drone uh, operations uh, but they're not operating uh, drone services. So UPS is kind of a leader in that space today. So Kevin, the kind of complex names that you gave us there, some of the certificates you've had from the FAA, how do those stack up next to some of your competitors? Does anyone else have this, um, this certification to run a fleet of UAVs? So as of today, there are only three holders of a Part 135 uh, certificate uh, that includes UPS, that includes Amazon, and that includes Wing, a division of Alphabet. Uh, there are others pursuing their Part 135, uh, non-traditional competitors, if you will. Uh, but that distinction, that level of certificate from the FAA, requires us to operate uh, with greater uh, safety, uh, and it requires greater training. Uh, procedures, operational planning, and um, uh, more rigor in our process. So, Kevin, let's get into a wide range of use cases here in a moment, but I have to ask about the map behind you because I think that that map has a kind of big importance to a project that you guys have been working on and have been doing for quite some time. So explain to me the map behind you and uh, why it's important to UPS Flight Forward. Sure. So that map you see is actually a map of the villages in Florida. The Villages is the world's largest retirement community, home to 135,000 seniors. And since May of 2020, uh, UPS teamed up with one of the world's largest uh, pharmacies uh, to deliver prescription medication from pharmacy to the nearby community, uh, helping that demographic to remain healthy at home during the pandemic. It's been it's been received tremendously well by the community. We have quite a few number of fans that come out to watch us operate. 
And then even our surveys, we've surveyed those that have received the service and um, they are excited and looking for us to expand our capability quickly. So with that in mind, you know, you guys are trying to expand this uh, pharmacy um, from pharmacy to home kind of use case. Is, has, have you seen any pushback since this population has been vaccinated? Have they uh, been wanting to go out and try to drive to the store or have you seen the same level of demand even after this group has been vaccinated? I tell you, the villages is, is definitely a, an active living community. Um, these folks are, are out and about. Um, however, the demand for uh, greater speed and convenience when it comes to prescription delivery, that demand uh, has maintained rather steadily uh, during the, the worst parts of the pandemic, uh, even now when, when many of the population are already vaccinated. Um, we think speed and convenience of drone delivery is like no other. You know, if you want a, a same day delivery via ground courier today, it's likely you're gonna be issued a three hour delivery window. With drones, you know, we're gonna deliver in 30 minutes or less, or give consumers an option, a, del a 30 minute delivery window of their choosing. So that's what I mean by convenience. It it's definitely more tailored. It's more of a custom delivery experience for the, the consumer. So we're moving from this Right now, we're in a stage of convenience. Everything is moving faster and faster, trying to get the same day or next day delivery. We're, we're entering an age here, as I'm hearing from you, of hyper convenience, of 30 minutes or less uh, being on your doorstep. Talk to me about some of the use cases. Pharmacies, pharmaceuticals, that makes a lot of sense to me. Talk to me about some of the other use cases that Flight Forward is focusing on. Yeah. So we have a very uh, strong strategy that focuses on the healthcare industry. Um, we believe this, this innovative technology, if it's going to be accepted by communities, it's got to be used for the right reasons. So at the villages, we're delivering medication. Another use case is B2B or commercial same day. And we are working with hospitals. I mentioned one earlier, which is Wake Med in Raleigh, North Carolina. And another hospital is Wake Forest Baptist Health in Winston-Salem. And for them, we're transporting uh, specialty medication uh, from their compounding pharmacy. For those that are not familiar with compounding pharmacies, that is where uh, medicines are, are developed and customized for the patient, you know, depending on, on blood types and, and their disease and what's being treated the medication is, is tailored to the patient. These medications are time and temperature sensitive. And so instead of using a ground courier, we're using the drone system uh, to transport these medications to the, uh, the point of care uh, for, for the patient themselves, making a better experience for the patient. And on the other side of, uh, not B2B, but how about B2C? Is there, uh, what kind of plan do you guys have for the next few years? I know pharmaceuticals, uh, as you said, you know, you kind of need to get approval, not only from regulators, which we'll get into some of the regulations, but you also need to get kind of social approval here. And that's why uh, pharmaceuticals and helping elderly populations make so much sense. But down the road, uh, you know, we see whether it be pizza delivered by uh, drones or something else down the road, you know, what are the plans for other types of uh, B2C uh, deliveries? So B2C down the road, drone delivery is gonna represent, like I said, the fastest and most convenient delivery option. And if you compare it to ground couriers and even autonomous ground vehicles, which is another uh, innovation that's kind of developing at the same time as drones, you're gonna find that a drone system, a network of drones, can service more customers in a, in a greater uh, radius of service compared to ground couriers. So as we prove out the applications today within the healthcare industry and, and medications, prescriptions, essential items, I think it's a logical next step that other retail products can be uh, injected into the, the network, uh, the drone network. So. We're talking about, you know, you know, maybe your coffee, maybe your favorite foods, maybe even pizza. 
Um, anything that needs to be delivered fast and there's a value for speed and convenience, drone delivery could have an application for. Kevin, let's talk about partnerships for a moment because partnerships have been key to Flight Forward, of building out the tech, testing out the tech. Talk to me about first the, the most recent partnership. I think it was the most recent partnership. You Your team posts up a lot of them, but uh, you guys purchased some eVTOL um, aircraft from Beta Technologies back in April. Talk to me about why you chose Beta, what they presented to uh, to UPS Flight Forward, and also, you know, in general, what does Flight Forward look for in partnerships? Sure. Um, so on April 7th, we announced a partnership with Beta Technologies. They are the manufacturer, like you said, an eVTOL. Um, and we, we've talked about direct-to-consumer. We've talked about B2B. But Beta Technologies is really another use case. And we see an opportunity to improve the UPS small package network with fully electric vertical takeoff and landing uh, aircraft like Beta. And what most people are probably not familiar with is, is how UPS operates, but it's basically a hub and spoke model moving packages across the country. Uh, quite often, aircraft are delayed due to weather or mechanical issues and urgent payloads could be stuck at an airport um, or they could be stuck at a hub. The vertical takeoff and landing beta can virtually take off and land just about anywhere uh, where there's enough space. And we can bypass our hub and spoke network and move these urgent payloads directly to where they have to go. Um, and with 20 million packages per day in our, in our network, uh, we have an up close and personal view. We know where those pain points are and we know how this new technology can be used to improve service for our customers. So, so Kevin, talk to me a little about, about the specs of the beta technology uh, eVTOLs because 20 million packages, there's obviously not, not a lot of them are going to go on there, but the most important and most urgent ones are how heavy can things get and how far can uh, they be taken? Yeah, great question. So, uh, the aircraft itself can carry, in its current design, up to 1,400 pounds of payload. Good Lord. It has That's a range much of heavier about, than I thought you were going to say. <laughs> absolutely. And, and like I said earlier, we can carry up to 7,500 pounds of payload. Uh, the Beta has up to 1,400 pounds of payload and a range of about 200 miles on a single charge. Now, conceptually, the Beta technology of the aircraft is going to need infrastructure, charging stations. And Beta is working with regular, uh, you know, uh, government agencies to help build this infrastructure uh, throughout the country. And, and there actually is a plan uh, to start out, I'll say on the, on the east side of the country for now. Um, some of this information is sensitive, but, um, the idea is to get that aircraft up and down the eastern seaboard uh, without issue. Kevin, I always love it when my guest puts in a sec perfect segue. So let's go ahead and jump on to regulations and legislation. What kind of relationship does UPS Flight Forward have with the FAA? Uh, you must have at least a pretty good one, given that you are one of three companies that have that uh, Part 135 certification. But tell me about the relationship you have with the FAA. Right. So the, the FAA, right? Um, we are working with them. As a matter of fact, it was 2018 where they came to us and they said, UPS, based on your experience with, in aviation, you know, we have over 30 years of operating a 121 airline, a cargo airline. Uh, we have a lot of respect for our, our safety and our procedures and our process. They came to us and said, hey, we're going to put time and attention to building this drone industry and we'd like you to be a part of that process. So these initial operations that we have up and running in Florida, North Carolina, we are feeding data back to the regulators so that they can learn and they can rewrite the regulations. Um, so I think it's cooperative. I think both organizations have similar uh, objectives and goals when it comes to the drone industry. Uh, one challenge we have is I think the FAA isn't necessarily structured for the UAS industry. So right now, existing departments throughout the organization 
are kind of patched together to support the development of UAS industry. And uh, sometimes things can get lost between these departments. And so uh, if I had one ask for the FAA, it would be to kind of uh, structure a, a new department dedicated to UAS. That would help accelerate our work. But for now, we have great relationships throughout the organization and uh, so far so good with, when it comes to progress. What else can help accelerate the approval for more companies to have uh, the designation or approval for more drone companies to be able to get their, their drones in the sky? What, what can drone companies do to help accelerate the laws? Is there anything with design or software? What can they do? Yeah, absolutely. Great question. Drones have been around for decades. Um, so the technology arguably isn't new. Uh, however, the commercial application in the U.S., in the national airspace system, is new. And there's new uh, requirements when it comes to air safety. And in my opinion, the technology providers still need to design for the, for, for the safe operation uh, of drones in the U.S., and so what I'm seeing is, is there's, there's dozens, if not hundreds of drone manufacturers out there. Uh, they go out, they build their aircraft. It flies beautifully. It completes the missions that they designed it for. Um, when UPS comes to the table, we might have missions that are a little different or unique to our, our customers. Um, and the regulators, the FAA might have some expectations that the vendor didn't think of from day one. And, and so it's really hard for these manufacturers to change their original aircraft, whether it's the hardware or the software, because they've, they've already committed such a large investment to get where they are. And that's kind of the rub. You know, you have these manufacturers with beautiful and great performing aircraft, but there's, there's some changes, there's some advancements in the tech that need to take place to satisfy the regulators or to satisfy UPS flight forward. Kevin, talk to me about, uh, well, there's, there's a word that has been uh, very widely used in our industry over the last year. I think it's the most overused word, and it's just flexibility or agility. Talk to me about when you guys are trying to select partners uh, for drones, talk to me about the the, the need and importance of having flexibility, of having multiple use cases, because right now, yes, medicines, medical supplies, those are the use cases. But as you said, things are going to branch off soon. So tell me about ha having partners that are flexible and able to move multiple different types of packages and multiple different lengths. Yeah, so agility and being able to develop uh, hardware enhancements and software enhancements really is the key to a good partner. Um, UPS Flight Forward has vetted many uh, and we value the ones that we've, we have worked with over the few years uh, in business. Um, it, it really goes back to their ability to adapt to our needs, the needs of our customer, the needs of our use case, uh, as well as the needs of the regulator. And to do it quickly because uh, changes can't take years. Changes have to happen in, in weeks in order for us to keep the momentum. Uh, and keep the attention of the regulators and the industry. So, so flexibility is key, and it's probably the toughest thing for these, these vendors to provide uh, because resources are limited uh, when, when um, the complexity of an operation is limited and, and the revenue opportunity is still capped by, by um, uh, a limit in capability. So for example, you know, today we have to fly within visual line of sight of operators. So that pretty much limits us to maybe at most three miles. It depends on the topography and where the operator is positioned, but only being able to operate within a three mile radius limits the use case, limits the value for the customer and limits the revenue we can generate. Uh, and so without that revenue, uh, the, the vendors are, are, are challenged to, to make changes and the regulators are saying, hey, you can't fly farther until those changes are made. So it's kind of the chicken or the egg and, and, and all organizations, all stakeholders are kind of trying to figure out the, the most efficient way possible uh, to develop more complex operations, operations that fly beyond visual line of sight, beyond that three mile radius. 
All right, Kevin, I'll got one more question for you before I let you out. And I, again, I got to say the 1400 pound payload on the, the beta technology eVoltals, that blows my mind. I was going to ask you, you know, what is the next breakthrough uh, in, in, in drones and uh, in VTOL, um, in VTOL <laughs> vehicles? What, you know, what are you looking forward to over the next 18, 24 months breakthroughs in technology? Yeah, great question. So for this industry to advance, I think the big unlock is operating beyond visual line of sight. And to do that, the FAA is, is looking for detect and avoid solutions. And what I mean by that is that the aircraft needs to be able to detect uh, cooperative and non-cooperative aircraft. So cooperative is an aircraft that's reporting its position. Non-cooperative, an example could be like a hot air balloon, they're not reporting their, their position. As a matter of fact, other aircraft have to avoid the hot air balloon. And the FAA expects UAS to do the same. So because we're dealing with aircraft, small UAS, so these are aircraft that weigh less than 55 pounds, it becomes a challenge to get tech onto the aircraft to sense. You think you, immediately you're like, hey, what about radar? Radar has been around for decades. Well, Radar units are large, they can't fit on the aircraft. Um, so if we can figure out a solution for these aircraft to detect and avoid, um, this, this industry is gonna open up uh, rapidly. And so UPS, we have some plans for BV loss testing uh, later this year. And we're gonna use those test operations to prove our safety case and hopefully gain approval from the FAA uh, for BV loss. Well, of course, Kevin, I would love to know more about that right now, but I'll, uh, I'll hold your word on it and make you come back to us here in a year or so and tell us how the trials are going. Thank you, Andrew. I'm happy to come back and, and tell you more next year. Well, Kevin, you seem optimistic, and there does seem to be a lot of catalyst ahead. If we can get through that line of sight uh, and get the FAA to open up a little bit more to the skies, have some more operators getting in there, I think it would be a great thing. But UPS is already got the certification. You're working towards it. You're one of the most aggressive and one of the most impressive divisions uh, in the in the industry. So thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to join us here at Drone Waves. Everyone else, stay tuned. We've got so much more for you here at Drone Waves. A big day planned. So don't go anywhere. <laughs>